Hey everyone, this is the last math lecture in this course, and I'm really excited about it because we're gonna go through an example of a t-test, and the t-test is what this entire course was building up to, so let's get started. All right, we're gonna head over to the computer, and we're gonna go through an example of a t-test together. I'll see you guys there. All right, so we're gonna go over an example of a t-test, and so this is going to incorporate basically everything that we've learned thus far. So we have over here a group of super smart scientists and obviously they know what they're doing. They have, they, they, you know, they're super smart, right? So they calculate an average of 73. So they were trying to figure out what's the average height in America. And they said 73 inches. And so um, I'm a little skeptical of that. I think that that's kind of a ridiculously high number for the average height in the uh, in the U.S. 73, but you know what? They're super super smart scientists. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say, okay, if it's 73, then if I do a confidence interval, it should always include that number. Well, uh, let's say I gather a sample here, um, and. Again, we should get numbers really close to 73. I mean, are we gonna get 73 every single person we ask, every single observation? No, of course not, but we should get an average that's about or around 73. And we have a new way of defining what that means. So um, let's talk about this. Our sample in this case is, uh, it's gonna be six numbers. It's gonna be 60, 63, 65, 67 and 63 again. Oh, let's do 64. So here are, oh, oh, and one more number. Let's do um, 74. Let's write that better. Okay, so here is our sample. We have six numbers total here. So a couple things are going to change, but again, we need, the idea is we need three numbers, our T star, we need our sample average, and we need our sample standard deviation, because those are the only things that we can really calculate here. So I'm going to start with the sample average and the sample standard deviation, because I have my calculator right here, and I can do that relatively quickly. So um, again, you can use an online calculator. You can calculate it by hand. We have the, fi the five slash six steps of calculating standard deviation. Um, so you can do this however you want, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do this um, with my calculator because um, I don't like it when math takes too long. So uh, I, have, I entered in the six numbers and I'm gonna figure out what the one variable statistics are. And let's see here, I get a sample average of 65.5. Let's switch up the colors up a little bit on you guys. Sample average 65.5. Sample, and let's make that decimal a little bit bigger. There we go. Sample, yeah, maybe that's a little bit too big. All right, sample standard deviation is 4.76. And then T star, T star. We gotta figure out how to, fi uh, how to find T star here. So we gotta go to our chart. And then I'm gonna make some annotations and show you guys how to do this. We're gonna develop a 95% confidence interval. Oops, I went to the wrong screen. Now, why do we calculate a 95% confidence interval? Well, that's because in the scientific community, again, 95% is just that number that scientists use. Um, that, to, according to the scientific community, 95% confidence is confident enough. Um, that's just what it's always been since like the uh, beginning of the 20th century. Um, someone just started that trend in one research paper and that kind of followed through ever since. Um, all right, so let's make some annotations here. So first off, uh, we have n equals six. And if you remember to calculate the degrees of freedom, to fix this hold on there we go to calculate degrees of freedom we just do n minus one so we take six minus one and we get five and then we're going to be using this column right here so our t t score is 2.571 
2.571. Now again, why do we use this column? Again, if you scroll all the way down on this chart, it says this is the column that's used for 95% confidence intervals. So 2.571. So now we're going to go back to our our uh, and it's uh, our notes here. 2.571. Is T star and so now we're going to let's use green we're going to develop our confidence interval so our confidence interval is going to start with 65.5 and then we're going to add and subtract um, T star which is 2.571 and then we're going to multiply that by well the denominator is going to be the square root of n what is n 6 Again, if you're kind of lost to like what I'm doing here, there are formulas in the previous lectures. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then the numerator is my sample standard deviation, which is 4.76. So now I just need to figure out what this is. And I'm going to use my handy dandy calculator. All right, let's see here. So first I'm going to figure out what the margin of error is just to avoid some PEMDAS issues. So I'm doing 2.571 times 4.76 first, uh, and then dividing that by the square root of 6. And that gives me a margin of error of 5. Wow, that's pretty convenient. So this makes this really easy. So my lower number then is, let's see here, 60.5 and 70.5. That's pretty nice and convenient. Well, I am nine. So what does this mean? That means I'm 95% certain that the average height is between 60.5 and 70.5. So my, now my question to you, and I want you to pause this video and really think about this. Did I prove the super smart scientists wrong? Pause the video and see if you can answer that question. So the answer, and this is kind of surprising because there might be a little bit of ish, There might be some issues here, but the answer is yes, I actually did prove that uh, these super smart scientists are in fact completely wrong. Their claim is completely false. Um, I'm at least 95% certain they're, they're, um, that their claim is wrong and therefore I'm going to say that I'm correct. Now you might be asking some questions, some really good questions like, uh, wait a minute, your sample size is like six. That's a really small sample size. What? how can you publish such a study and say that these super smart scientists are wrong if your sample is so so tiny well so this is a really good question um, the reason is so long as my sample is representative of the same population that these super smart scientists are trying to talk about if I did a random sample then technically it doesn't matter why doesn't it matter well, that's because of this number right here, the T star. And that's why we use, that's why using T tests are so much, it's so much better to do that than to use a Z test because the T test under, makes the assumption that you're, you can use small sample size. If you go to that, that T table that we were talking about earlier, you'll notice that you can get down to a DF of one, which means you would have a sample size of two, which is absolutely insane because that's a really small sample size. But again, if you have a small sample size, the T star is a lot larger than Z star. Remember, Z star is 1.96 for 95% confidence intervals. So that number that's in this blue right here should be 1.96, but it's 2.571 because my sample size is so small. And therefore, my margin of error is going to be 50% larger than it really needs to be. And it's just a penalty that I have to uh, endure. But even though I'm enduring such a penalty, because my sample is very, very surprisingly far away from these super smart scientists, well, my confidence interval is not going to, um, my confidence interval is going to be good enough to not include this average that the super smart scientists are, are making, are claiming to be the average. So uh, another really, uh, really good question is, what about the 74 right here? You notice that's 70, uh, it looks like all my numbers here are pretty much all less than 73 except this one number 74. Is that going to mean that the 73 could be still right? 
Well, not quite, because what really matters is the confidence interval, not the sample. So you can't really look at the sample and say, hey, look, I got a sample. Uh, one of my observations was 74, which is really close to the super smart scientist. So I can't prove the super smart scientist wrong, right? No, you still can. You absolutely still can, because you notice five out of six uh, observations in this experiment slash observational study, whichever one you want to refer to it as, um, are significantly different from 73. They are not around 73. Um, they're all really close to each other and they're all around like 65.5. Um, well, those four were actually a little bit lower than that. So now the question is, now that I, so now, now the question is, now that I've proven these super smart scientists wrong, what do I do next? Well, these super smart scientists are wrong. Their theory is no longer a theory. It's no longer something that the scientific, scientific community should accept to be true. So um, what is? What should the scientists believe in now? Well, because your research study proved those super smart scientists wrong, then what you have now is the authority to claim what the actual average is. And if you want to pick whatever average you wanted to, I would recommend picking this average. 65.5 because that's the average of your sample now is that the correct average no it's definitely not and you should never claim like i know that the uh, the population average is 65.5 because it's definitely not um, but what you get to say is that for now we should believe that the average height is 65.5 inches and then later on someone will come out with another study that has a 95 percent confidence interval that does not include 65.5 and they get to the, the authority to call you um, to say that your theory is no longer a theory. And so this is just a constant game of refining um, theories to become better and better over time. But this is, uh, um, this is how science works through the example of a t-test. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next video. You just watched a video from Amore Learning. We provide free math videos and we offer many online courses. We also provide free math tutoring via YouTube Live every Thursday and Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video to get access to all of our free content. And put a comment in the comment section if you have any math questions. Check out all of our courses on amorelearning.org.